Well, welcome back. We're going to get right straight into our learning the words segment on the show. God is so good. Let's get into his word. Huh. <laughs> it's kind of crazy at my house right now, you might imagine. All right. <laughs> now let's go to Revelation. We are in chapter 8, verse 10. We're going to start our study here. Are you ready? Let's pray and ask the Lord to teach us and permit us to learn from him in Jesus' name, okay? My king, we love you. You are wonderful. Praise and honor and glory and worship be unto you. And your holy name be lifted and praised throughout all the earth and all of heaven. Oh, Lord, pour your spirit upon us, we pray. Permit us to sit at your feet and learn from you. Teach us, oh, Lord. Plant the seed of your word in good soil in our hearts. And I surrender all that I am to you. Everything I think, say, and do, let it be you and not me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we love you so much. Come soon, my king. Mwah! Amen. Okay, let's get into chapter 8. Verse 10, oh, I love this candle. This is a jasmine candle. I have discovered jasmine. It's way happy. Mmm, 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 mmm. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. And, you know, Shabbat Shalom. I have my candle lit. Did you light your candle? This is the Sabbath. Its sun has gone down, and I've lit my candle to remember the Lord on his day because this commandment says to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We don't do the rituals and all that. We just remember the day to keep it holy and we remember him on his day. So I encourage you to remember the Lord on the Sabbath and just take an inventory of all the things that you're thankful for in your life and thank him on his day and then on every day okay let's get into revelation 8 verse 10 is everybody okay over here <laughs> um let's see now miss uh <laughs> brian that's cool uh thank you and now Deb is giving a scripture here. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not turn back. This verse in the KJV 1960, uh, 1769 version blows me away. What other New Testament verse deals with this? Now, um, this is where the temple is defiled, the treaty is breached, and the Jews have to flee. The, right there where you're talking about. Natasha says, uh, what happens at the sixth seal? Now, that is found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. That is the, um, the temple's defiled. Then six days later, we have a blood moon, the center blood moon of the triad of blood moons that hang over 2018 in January, July, and January. Okay? This will be the only blood moon out of the seven with the tetrad and then the triad that falls anywhere near the ninth of all. It's the only one. Okay. So we have pretty solid evidence for 2018 at this time. Now it doesn't mean it won't change, but I don't think it's going to change because we've got this very special set of circumstances where um, in 2018 with the ninth of Av, and then you've got the blood, the blood moon six days later, which is the opening of the sixth seal has a blood moon, and the events of the sixth seal are listed in Revelation 6 verses 12 through 17, and they include a, go a global quake, uh, Satan and his one third of evil angels being cast down to the earth. They'll be here personally. It's going to be reekage, carnage, a squeakage, okay? It's going to be terrible to have them here physically in person because they're powerful. They have power that we don't, okay, physically. 
they are created to be higher than higher beings than we are um but god loves us doesn't he and he died for us and not for them they are ministering spirits for those who are heirs of salvation so the angels watch over us and they minister to us and protect us and they do all kinds of things praise god for the angels okay now let's get into uh anybody else over here that's right deb shirley says uh matthew 24 17 is another scripture like that one deb um okay i think we're good let's get into it revelation chapter 8 verse 10 and the third angel sounded now this is the we are in the trumpet judgments here and this is the third trumpet the third angel with the third trumpet okay the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, I'll tell you what I think this is. If you look at the second trumpet judgment, you see a meteor or an asteroid that hits the earth. And it causes great devastation. It doesn't destroy the planet, but it causes, it hits the sea and causes a tsunami that really wreaks a lot of destruction. Now, what I think this third seal is and this star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. If you look at the Russian translation for the word wormwood, do you know what it is? Chernobyl. <laughs> Chernobyl. Well, we know Chernobyl was a terrible, it actually, before Fukushima, it was the worst nuclear accident ever in history. And now, you know, Fukushima makes Chernobyl look like a, a microwave oven. So, but Wormwood is Chernobyl in Russian. That's nuclear, okay? Now, I think what happens is as this asteroid or meteor is headed toward the Earth, they fire nukes at it. And I think what this is, is a nuke coming back down and hitting our planet at the uh, polar ice cap. Now, the reason I say that is because it, it says it fell upon the third part of the rivers. Now, it, all our whole planet's fresh water source originates at the polar ice cap. Huh? Come here, baby. What's the password to the tablet? Uh, here, let me write it down for you. Come here, let me write it on your hand. Don't say it out loud. There you go. You're welcome, my love. Okay. Now, this poisons the third part of the waters. And I think this is probably a nuke that is that we fire at the meteor in the second Trump judgment that ends up coming back down on us. And I think on the polar ice caps, because that's where the wor the planet's fresh water originates from. OK. And so I think what this is, it says it's burning as it were a lamp, a great star burning as a lamp. I think that may be a nuke that we have fired coming back on us okay because it poisons the fresh water one third of the planet's fresh water and that's where you where it would have to hit in order to accomplish that okay and let's go on to the fourth the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so that as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. I'm tell you what I think happens here. Um, 
the CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, is able to create effects on the earth that are devastating. I think what they may see, they can create black holes with that thing. They can create, uh, they can, they can actually tear the sky open with this thing. Now, I think since you can, what it's saying is that a third part of the sky that we see out there, a third part of the sky is going to just be pitch black. You won't be able to see the sun, moon, or stars in that one third part of the sky. And what it looks like is that they have ripped the sky open. <laughs> yeah, they have ripped the sky open. And that, and what that means in this one spot where it gets ripped open, it covers like a third of the sky. In this one spot where it's ripped open, uh, you can't see anything, just a big black void, okay? Then when it passes, you see the sun, the moon, and the stars again. But it says that uh, the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. So for a third part of the day, you're going to see this big black void in the sky. And for a third part of the night. See, in a 24-hour day, you've got eight hours, eight hours, and eight hours in thirds. So what that means is that everybody, for eight hours out of 24 hours, they're going to be able to see this big tear in the sky. Um, that's what I think it is. I could be wrong, but, I mean, it does sound like a big tear in the sky to where, and if this is a simulation, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Where you've got a hole torn in the sky um, and you can't see anything through it, okay? Because how else would it make any sense? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it would to some people, but let's go on to 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, Whoa, whoa. See, there's three, three woes to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Now, the last three trumpet judgments are called woes. And I mean, they are like woes, okay? Let's go straight into chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded. This is the fifth trumpet judgment. All right. Um, everybody okay over there? Okay. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Here's another star falling. This is an angel. See, here's another place where the stars are equated with the angels. Star, saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The star is a hymn. Did you notice that? These are angels. And they are not as far away as what we have been told. Now, I may have told, I've told you guys a few times, but I'll repeat this. When, uh, when we flew to Israel, my friend and I, when we flew to Israel on our way back, it I was looking at, we're flying at like 39,000 feet. We're way, way up high to where you can kind of even see the curvature of the earth, right? Well, I looked outside the window and I saw seven stars below the plane. And I turned to my friend and I said, am I losing my mind? Or do you see seven stars out there under the plane? She looked and she said she saw seven stars under the plane too. So I wasn't just crazy. Well, you know, I, but when you see stars under the plane, you, it kind of makes you go, huh? <laughs> because we're taught that the nearest star is like a billion light years away. Okay. 
But here we go. Fifth angel sounded. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. Now this is the fifth trumpet. And remember what I just told you all ago that the there's a creature that comes out of the bottomless pit and he slays the two witnesses. And nobody was able to slay the two witnesses from the time they show up all the way through the end of 1,260 days. Then they are slain. So it says here, he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. I mean, this is going to really, uh, you know how they've had to shut down airports in, in Europe because of a volcano in Iceland that produced, that put so much uh, smoke and ash into the air. I think we're looking at kind of a similar thing where this bottomless pit, I mean, just smoke. And uh, it says the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Reekage. And it means they can sting you. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. So locusts, that's usually what they go after is, you know, uh, the green grass, the green trees, that kind of thing. But they won't. They're commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. But their target is guess what? Only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, whether or not believers in Christ have the seal in their foreheads at salvation, I don't know. I don't know. I hope we have God's seal. We can't see it if we do. Um, but this does give the present the possibility that these locusts, this terrible plague, um, can affect believers. It just wouldn't affect the 144,000. Now, see, the Holy Spirit is our seal. But the seal of God in their foreheads, that is the 144,000 from Revelation chapter 7. Okay? In verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. What, my love? You're back? Let me finish this. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment, come here, baby. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. Have you ever been stung by a scorpion? I have. It hurts like Hades, okay? It hurts so bad, it's actually really hard to describe. Um, what it felt like was a needle. Uh, it was crawling on my bed, actually. I'll tell you about this. Here, let's cover yours. <laughs> I, was, I was in my bed, right? I'm a teenager in my mom and dad's house. And I can see something is crawling on top of my covers up toward me, <laughs> toward my head. It's crawling. And I'm thinking, what is that? <laughs> and so I take my hand and I go to brush it off onto the floor, right? Because I don't know what it is, if it's a moth or what, right? It's dark. I'm seeing this thing in the moonlight. And as I go to brush it off, it stings me on the side of my finger and I reach up to pull the needle out of my finger. It felt like a needle went in one side of my finger and out the other side. That's what it felt like. And so I reach up to pull this needle out of my finger and there is no needle. I've been stung by a scorpion <laughs> in my bed. <laughs> Mwah. But that'll never happen to you in Jesus' name. 
But anyway, the reason I tell you that is because a scorpion sting hurts really, really bad, okay? But I'll tell you what actually really helps. Now, my dad, he grabbed my finger, he's sucking the poison out and spitting it out, and it's like this, it's a pink color, the poison that they inject into you with their tails. And if you get it out of there, make sure you got no sore in your mouth, whoever's sucking the poison out. But once you get it out and spit it out, put ice on it. Now, if you touch an ice cube to a scorpion sting, it'll immediately subside and stop hurting. But here's the catch. If you pull the ice cube away, it's instant agony again. Okay, you kind of just have to put ice on it and strap it down and leave it on there. It just hurts too bad if you, do, if you take the ice off. Now, this is saying in verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Now, that kind of pain for five months, wreakage. And I think that's why... They call it a woe, you know, I mean, W-O-E, like, whoa, all right? And that's all, I mean, you hear these things, and that that's what you say. You go, whoa. It's a woe. It's the first woe. Now, it says in verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. It hurts bad. And in those days shall men seek death. Now things are going to be so bad during this time. You're looking at the fifth trumpet here. When the bottomless pit is open and all these scary creatures come out of it. Okay. Uh, it's going to be scary to, to be here during that time. I'm glad we won't be here. But it says, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. What happens is I think this is telling us that the effects of the mark are more than what people think. Yes, my love. When me and Dad and Boogie were looking for ones for our compost yesterday, we saw a scorpion and it didn't sting us. I'm so glad it didn't sting you. You stay away from those scorpions, okay? My dad, my dad told me to stand back. Yeah, that's a good idea. Did you did you obey him like he told you? Yes. Good. Very good. You stay away from those scorpions. They're scary. Now, it says here, five months is how long people are tormented and, by this particular judgment. last time when me and Mama went in, in her bathroom, there was a scorpion in on her counter. Reekage. Did she kill it? Yeah. Good. I'm so glad. She squished it with her shoes. Oh, she squished it with her shoe? Mm -hmm. That sounds like a very good thing to do. Don't squish it with your hand. Now, this is interesting in that it tells you exactly how long this judgment, this woe, torments people. It says that they should be tormented five months. So we know this particular woe lasts for five months. But a scorpion sting that lasts for five months, OMG, okay? This is like a, a super scorpion or something. It's just terrible. But it says that it's five months, and it calls it torment. So evidently, this is a terrible pain that cannot be remedied for five months. And I don't know if this affects believers or not, but it's possible. Because 
believers don't have the seal of God in their foreheads. Only the 144,000 do. Our seal is the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't mean that you won't endure this if you're here. This is second half, remember. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Now what it's saying here, I think what it's saying um, is that the mark technology is so off the charts advanced that those who take it can't die anymore and they can't sleep. Let me get you some scripture here because it says that they have no rest day nor night. And it also says that death shall flee from them. They won't be able to die. Those who took the mark will not be able to physically die. And that's really scary really scary but they have no rest day nor night that means once they take the mark they can't sleep anymore uh, oh already they can't sleep and they can't die we're going to pick up right there at chapter 9 verse 7 uh on monday when we come back and should the lord tarry we'll see you soon here there or in the air do right and risk the consequences.